Hello, we are John and Brianna Bolino from Wittenham Productions. Thank you so much for visiting our channel. We hope you enjoy this video. We put a lot of work into it. If you would like access to more videos like this and to get a free tutorial sent straight to your email, visit our website at creatingwithourcreator.net. If you enjoy this and would like to support what we're doing and help us make more videos like this, feel free to check out our um, Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App links in the description box below. Thanks for watching. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the course Creating with Our Creator, we have been slowly walking through the account of God's creation of the universe as accounted in the book of Genesis. We hear over and over again of how God spoke every aspect of the world into existence by His Word. And we have continually encountered scriptures that remind us of the importance of being rooted in God's Word, impressing upon us that God's Word brings life. And without it, we will wither and die. Have you ever considered that the Word of God that we encounter in the scriptures is the very same Word through which God spoke the world into existence? Mankind was made by God's Word in the beginning, and it is God's Word that sustains our life still. Though by His Word God made mankind in His image, humanity rejected that Word which made them and turned away towards increasing evil. A fall into non-existence. Throughout the scriptures, we hear the continual call of God's Word hearkening to mankind that we would return to our God, our Maker, and live. God showed forth His glory in the stars. He sent the Law and the Prophets, yet still man did not turn. So the Word Himself became flesh. Saint Athanasius wrote, around the year 340 A.D. Three ways thus lay open to them by which they might obtain the knowledge of God. They could look up into the immensity of heaven and by pondering the harmony of creation come to know its ruler, the word of the Father, whose all-ruling providence makes known the Father to all. Or, if this was beyond them, they could converse with holy men, namely the prophets, and through them learn to know God, the artificer of all things, the Father of Christ, and to recognize the worship of idols as the negation of the truth and full of all impiety. Or else in the third place, they could cease from lukewarmness and lead a good life merely by knowing the law. The law and the prophets were a sacred school of the knowledge of God and the conduct of the spiritual life for the whole world. 
so great indeed were the goodness and the love of God. Yet men, bowed down by the pleasures of the moment and by the frauds and illusions of the evil spirits, did not lift up their heads towards the truth. What then was God to do? What else could he possibly do, being God, but renew his image in mankind, so that through it men might once more come to know him? And how could this be done, save by the coming of the very image himself, our Savior, Jesus Christ? The Word of God came in his own person, because it was he alone the image of the Father, who could recreate man, made after the image. In order to effect this recreation, however, he had first to do away with death and corruption. Therefore, he assumed a human body, in order that in it, death might once for all be destroyed, and that men might be renewed according to the image. St. Athanasius continues, the image of the Father only was sufficient for this need. Here is an illusion to prove it. You know what happens when a portrait that has been painted on a panel becomes obliterated through external stains. The artist does not throw away the panel, but the subject of the portrait has to come and sit for it again. And then the likeness is redrawn on the same material. Even so was it with the all-holy Son of God. He, the image of the Father, came and dwelt in our midst in order that he might renew mankind made after himself and seek out his lost sheep. Even as he says in the Gospel, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. This also explains his saying, except a man be born anew. He was not referring to a man's natural birth from his mother, as they thought, but to the rebirth and recreation of the soul in the image of God. To prepare us to celebrate Christmas, today we will be imitating Christ by tracing over one of the oldest images we have of the Word of God the ancient Byzantine icon, Christ Pantocrator. The word Pantocrator means ruler of all. What a fitting name. Ancient Byzantine iconography is a very beautiful and involved tradition that carefully chooses materials from nature, including specially prepared wood boards and handmade paints with natural ingredients. Next week, we will be touching on this idea by mixing our own paints from egg yolk and pigment. During this class, we will seek to complete our detailed tracing. We will then spend our next class carefully painting our traced icon. As you trace over this image, it is very important that you are as careful and thoughtful as possible. As with all the art we have been making, this work is meant not only to produce a beautiful picture, but a deeper transformation of our own souls into the image of the Word of the Father, our Maker, our Lord Jesus Christ. During this Christmas project, we will have a special opportunity to relate to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Here we are, mere creations of God, making our own creation in His image. Imagine how Mary felt as a daughter of God, having her own Maker growing inside, becoming her child. You'll notice that this icon is very particular in that it is not symmetrical on both sides. It is thought that the differences between the left and the right sides of the face of Christ are meant to reflect the two natures of Christ as fully God and fully man. Here is how the right and left sides of the image would appear 
if they were symmetrical. As you draw over this ancient beloved image, do so with the utmost silence and reverence, thoughtfully considering how each side of the face differs from the other. May you be transformed by the image of Christ. For supplies, we will be using a sturdy piece of watercolor paper, a printout of the Christ Pantocrator icon, a sheet of graphite transfer paper, artist tape or another tape that is easily removable, and a transferring stylus. If you do not have a stylus, a mechanical pencil with the lead pushed down should work just fine. We will begin by placing the graphite paper over top the watercolor paper, right where you want your image to be. We will then carefully tape down the Pantocrator icon image over top your graphite paper. Be sure that the dark side of your graphite paper is facing down. Once it is all taped on securely, you can then carefully and thoughtfully go over each line of the icon, pressing firmly. This will transfer the image of the icon onto the watercolor paper beneath. Oh. 